Hello everyone, welcome to Summit Church Fenton Online. I'm so glad you've joined me today and I look forward to sharing the Word of God with you. I'm conducting a series titled The Anointing and for the last couple of weeks we've been, uh, we've been looking at this very, very important subject. If you've missed uh, either of the first couple of sessions on this, I'd like to invite you to go back into our archives and get caught up on anything that you may have missed. Anytime uh, a, a minister is, is preaching a series, it's important that you listen to all the parts to get the fullness of what is being said. So, so again, if you've missed the, the previous sessions, I'd invite you to go back into the archives, listen to them. They're there for you for free and get caught up uh, before we continue on here today. Uh, and, and, you know, we're talking about the, the, the anointing, as I said, and the anointing uh, of God, it's the power of the Holy Spirit, or we could say the Holy Spirit's uh, power, uh, su such a, a dynamic subject. And, uh, and, and I don't believe that I'm teaching on this uh, series at this time just by accident. Um, I believe the Holy Spirit very strongly led me to teach on this at this time. And so... Uh, it, it, I, I believe, I've said this in the previous sessions, that, there, that there's people that are listening to this that, uh, that, that you're facing some tough situations, a tough situation, you know, in, in, your, in your body as far as it pertains to health, healing some people that are facing terminal uh, situations and uh, terminal conditions where your life hangs in the balance. Uh, but I don't believe that we're on this by accident. I believe the Lord has me teaching on this just for you, to help you, because I know several people, many people who ought to be dead right now because a terminal illness hit their body. But thank God for the anointing. Their anointing hit their body and drove that, that sickness and disease out. And they're still alive and well today because of the anointing. So uh, not on this by accident on it to help you and hey if you know somebody that's that's facing a tough situation a terminal illness i would advise you to to encourage them to to you know tell them about this tell them that that i'm teaching on this and the anointing can help them and uh direct them to to this uh to the website and whatnot you know and have them uh have them listen i believe it'll be a blessing to them and could save their life. Absolutely. Of course, our opening text, Isaiah 10, 27 says, it'll come to pass, King James Version, it'll come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. Now we're talking about burden here, uh, 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 a yoke, a yoke of bondage, a burden, a yoke of bondage shall be taken away. It says the yoke shall be destroyed because because of the anointing. The yoke of bondage that you're bound with can be destroyed because of the anointing, which of course is the, the power of the precious Holy Spirit. And so uh, uh, I'm going to continue teaching on the subject today and the next several weeks as long as the Lord leads and directs. Uh, the last couple of sessions, of, well, the first, I guess this is session three. The first session was, was introductory. And then last week I centered in a, a, on the anointing in Jesus's uh, ministry. Going to continue today. Wanna, been centering in here more so upon the anointing upon, you know, the anointing. So power of God can come on folk. Absolutely. But there's also the anointing of the spirit within within us and i'll get to i'll begin talking about that as we move along here you know in the next sessions ahead but i want to continue talking about the the power of the spirit of god upon uh, let's look at luke the fifth chapter uh like i said last week we looked at uh, at jesus's ministry and the anointing that flowed in his ministry again if you missed that go back and listen to it but uh, I just wanted to uh, conclude here, say, say one more thing about the, the anointing in his ministry uh, before, I, before I go on. Luke, the fifth chapter, said in the 17th verse, Luke 5, 17, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching. Remember I told you that, that it's so important to have the teaching 
you know, preaching of the Word of God. There's something about the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God that causes the power of the Holy Spirit to go into operation. So many people want to bypass the teaching and preaching of the Word of God. They don't want to sit under the teaching and preaching of the Word. They just want to get to the power of God. You know, I've dealt with many of them over the years. They don't want to come and sit and listen to the Word of God. They just want, you know, they want to tap into that power and get healed and go about and do their own thing. You know, go back to doing their own thing. Well, it doesn't work that way. You know, you, you submit yourself and humble yourself and sit under the Word of God and listen to the Word of God. And the anointing, as we've said, rides upon the Word of God. The anointing rides upon worship music and, and, and sit under good worship music and worship the Lord and, and sit under the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. And tell you what, you, you'll be right there for the anointing of God to hit your body and help you, but you, you, don't, you, you don't bypass the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. You just don't. Jesus' ministry was teaching, preaching, and healing. All right? There were three parts to it, teaching, preaching, and healing. You know, uh, the teaching is like a line upon line, precept upon precept. That's, that's what I primarily do. And then that's the teaching. And then the preaching is, you, you know, you, you take a text and then you just kind of kind of go with it. You know, it's not really line upon line, precept upon precept. It, a lot of times it gets more into, you know, preaching, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Listen to R.W. Schambach sometime. He, he wasn't, uh, uh, he, he didn't really do much teaching, but I, but, but, but I tell you what, he'd take the, he, he would take a, a text from the Bible and just, you know, he just, like one guy said, he'd preach the horns off a of billy goat. I tell you what, and, and you can get a, you can get, you know, there's things you can, blessing you can get out of preaching that you can't get out of teaching. And there's a blessings you can get out of teaching that you can't get out of preaching. I like them both. Praise God. Primarily I teach. Once in a while, the anointing will come on me and I'll start preaching. And, uh, and oh, what a blessing that is. But primarily I, the anointing's on me to teach line upon line, precept upon precept. There's blessings in both. And then Jesus ministers, teaching, preaching, and then, and then you get the, the healing. You get the anointing flowing in the, in the area of healing. And, and again, I've seen hundreds and hundreds, multitudes of people healed in my ministry by, by the anointing of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. And praise God for it. So anyway, Jesus was teaching here. Jesus was teaching and there were, and notice the Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord. Well, what is that? That's the anointing of God. That's the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And, and actually, I like the way the Amplified Classic brings this out. The power of the Holy, the, the power of the Lord was present with him. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Lord was present with Jesus to heal them, to heal them. Absolutely. The power of the Lord. Now, Jesus is the Lord. You understand, but he was operating in this, in his ministry, he was, he was God, but he wasn't operating as God. He was operating as a man, as we've said, anointed with the Holy Spirit, anointed with the power of God in his deity. He didn't need that anointing. He already had it. But in his humanity, he needed that anointing. And so he was anointed, you know, as we've said, at his water baptism, the Holy Spirit descended upon him and so forth. And, 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 and so the power of the, of the Holy Spirit was with him and it was present here to heal, to heal. And, uh, and, and to heal, yeah, these religious people, a lot of these people were Jesus' critics. You know, God's good. He's a good God. <laughs> he, he'll even heal his critics. Absolutely. And I have always found this fascinating that, that these people, as we'll, we'll see here in a minute, the, the, you know, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, and they were his critics. Many, most of them were his critics. Oh, but God's good. Jesus is good. He'll even heal his critics if they'll let him. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Who? The Pharisees and teachers of the law. <laughs> Absolutely. And then behold, verse 18, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they, whom they sought to bring in and lay before Jesus. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because there were just so many people there, they went up on the housetop, let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. So they essentially, they tore open the roof 
<laughs> they lowered him down in front of Jesus. Think about that. I think that would have been cool to see that. And he saw their faith, verse 20. When he saw, when Jesus saw their faith, see, it took faith to do that. He saw their faith. He said to, to this paralyzed man, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? See, they're just not going to drop their criticism. They're just not going to do it. So sad. They're not going to drop their criticism. And as you'll see, they didn't get healed. They didn't get healed. Isn't that sad? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or rise up and walk? Well, you know as well as I do, it'd be easier to say your sins are forgiven because how would, how would anybody really know that? <laughs> you know, that's easier to say your sins are forgiven. Right? That'd be easier. easier. Well, he says, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? It's harder to say rise up and walk because then now if the, the, now the guy's got to rise up and walk. That's a harder thing to say, isn't it? Rise up and walk. That's harder to say. That's harder for the minister to say that, rise up and walk. It's easy to say, well, your sins are forgiven because how can anybody really know that? Only God would know that, you know. That's over in the spiritual realm, you see. But rise up and walk, that's a, that's a hard thing to say because that guy's got to get up and walk for your words as a minister to be so, to be right, to be accurate. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Now, that's authority. Uh, English word uh, power, sometimes it's translated from the word uh, like dynamite power, which is what we've been talking about in this series, the, the anointing. Sometimes the English word Power is translated from a Greek word, uh, which means authority. This time, this word here uh, means authority. Uh, uh, up in verse 17, the power there was the dynamite power. See, Jesus had the dynamite power to heal this guy, but he also had the authority uh, to forgive his sins. And that, may you, that you may know that the Son of Man has authority. We could say power or authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. <laughs> now, that's, that's much harder to say than your sins are forgiven you. But that, that they would know that Jesus had the authority to forgive sins. Now, if this guy... Uh, picks up his bed and walks, now then that'll prove that Jesus had the authority to forgive sins. So he said, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. He got healed. The anointing of God hit this guy. The power of God, the, the, the dynamite power, the anointing hit this guy and healed him, which then of course means Jesus has the authority to forgive sins. But let's stay focused on the on the, on the power of the anointing. So he rose up before them, took up what he had been laying on, departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and glorified God. Uh, and, and they glorified God and were uh, filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today and, and so forth. And that is strange thing, seeing somebody, seeing four guys tear open a roof, lower paralyzed man down and and have him be healed, but glory to God. You Tell you what, you'll see some awesome uh, things if you, uh, <laughs> if you stay hooked up with the anointing of God and, 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 and attend a church where the anointing of God is flowing, the power of God is flowing. But, you know, these are the, the now these scribes and Pharisees and teachers of the law, you know, uh, the power was present to heal them, but of course, we see they didn't get healed. There's no record here that anybody got healed in this setting, in this incident, incidents here, other than this paralyzed man. But yet the power of God was there to heal anybody, even the critics. And, and it doesn't record it here, but oftentimes these, these uh, religious people, they would, they, instead of rejoicing that somebody like this paralyzed man got healed, they'd get all upset because Jesus, you know, if he did it on the Sabbath day, they'd get upset because he did it on the wrong day. But the point is, you see... Uh, the, the, this reasoning and this criti criticalness that these guys had, the power of God was present, the anointing was present to heal them, but their, 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 their cr criticalness and being critical and judgmental and so forth. It, it, remember, we've been, been talking about that, that, that the anointing 
uh, certain things will conduct the anointing. Just like electricity in the natural realm, you have the anointing in the spiritual realm, and certain things will conduct electricity, and certain things won't. In the over here in the spiritual realm, excuse me, certain things will conduct the anointing, and certain things won't. Remember, we talked about that last week. We talked about cloth, how the anointing will flow through cloth. But but more importantly than cloth, the anointing will flow through uh, 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 through faith. But it won't flow through doubt and unbelief. Remember when people had faith, the woman with, with the issue of blood, she had faith and the, the power, the, you know, the anointing, the power came out of Jesus, flowed through his cloth into her body and healed her. But in his hometown, he could there do no mighty works. The anointing, the power of God wouldn't flow in his hometown except in a few minor instances wouldn't flow there because of their doubt and unbelief. So doubt and unbelief will not conduct the anointing, but faith will. And this, this fellow here, this paralytic was healed. Jesus saw their faith. He saw the faith of these four guys that lowered him, you know, and, and, and the paralytic, no doubt. And so faith will conduct the anointing, but this, this criticalness, I... It will not conduct the anointing. I, I've, I've seen a lot of people over the years where, where I'm thinking about several people right now. They're just critical. I'd, a lot of times I, I'd get up to teach and they're sitting there and they're critical and, and just, just you know wanting to be sure I say everything just perfect and just accurate. Now, now you ought to hold the preacher to a high standard and we ought to be teaching right in line with the Word of God. But, but you know, they... Uh, I can I, I I might misspeak or so you know you know what I mean but I've already had them sitting there where where they they they're just being just critical every last word I say those people never did get anything they never as far as getting healed or having the anointing flow through them be healed no not not a one of them but then I've had other people sitting there just childlike faith listening to the word of God and the power of God oftentimes hit those people and hit their bodies and heal them glory to God now, I remember. Uh, some years ago, uh, when we were on location, there was a uh, there was a, a certain uh, 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 man and woman that uh, uh, actually they were assisting me, and uh, uh, they had become so critical that uh, I, I just uh, I, in fact well they eventually left, but I. I, I and it was better that they did because I couldn't help them and they weren't being a help to me. But I, I was going to have to move them and sit them, sit them in the back because they were hindering the flow. Absolutely. Just, just criticalness, cri criticalness, being critical and judgmental I, and, and, and stickle picker and nitpicky, that kind of stuff. I tell you what, the anointing won't float, won't conduct through that. And since they were an assistant, now if they hadn't have been in an assistant role, that would have been different. But they were like assisting me, they were, and, and on a certain level. And it got to the point I was going to have to move them and just, just assign them to sit in the back. You know, get them just back as far away from the pulpit as I could, because it was actually for a while they're hindering the hindering the flow of the, the preaching and teaching anointing and the and the flow of the spirit. And, and you just can't have that around. You certainly can't have that in leadership. I'm telling you on, on any level. I'm just telling you, you I tell you, there, 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 there's something about agreement being in agreement. Yeah, the anointing will something that will conduct the anointing is agreement. Absolutely agreement. And it's a good thing when, when, when the church is in agreement, you know, around the word of God and they're supporting the pastor and, and, you know, yes, you need to, you need to judge, not, not be judgmental, but you need to judge what the pastor is saying and line it up with the word of God. But I tell you what, if he's teaching the word of God, you know, you, 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 there's, there's, it, it, the Bible says it's a great blessing when church is in unity and one accord and, and, and the, the anointing will flow through that, that, uh, that agreement and that one, being in one accord, glory to God. And so it's interesting, these people, the, here's what I want you to especially see, the power of the Lord, the anointing was present to heal these people, even these critics, but they didn't get healed because they, they'd gotten their attitudes, their attitudes were in such a place where the anointing would, would, wouldn't conduct, uh, uh, wouldn't conduct and flow through it. And it's clear to me that, that some of them needed to be healed. Otherwise, the Bible more than likely wouldn't have said in verse 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal. See? So anyway, let's don't be critical. Let's don't be judgmental. Now let's judge. The, the Bible says we ought to you know, judge what ministers are preaching. Not be judgmental, but judge it in line with the Word of God. But let's don't be judgmental and, and get ourselves into a, into a position where the anointing won't flow, uh, 
flow in our lives, okay? So now, now we've talked about the ministry of Jesus, and I was going to try to get that part in last week, but I ran out of time. So, uh, so, so now I've, I've gotten that in. But now let's look back into the Old Testament and observe some things, and then we'll work our way and come back to the New Testament to close here in, in just a while. But let's go to the Old Testament. We're looking, as I said, primarily at the anointing upon, because there's an anointing of power. God will come on, folk, certainly. Uh, it will. And I've had it in the Old Testament, New Testament, I've had it come on me. Glory to God. And, uh, and it's come on many, many ministers and preachers over the last 2,000 years, you know, since Jesus has ascended and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And uh, uh, But uh, uh, I want to look back at the Old Testament, and then we'll work our way, as I said, back here up, and we'll close up here in, in about a half hour or so, whatever, in the New Testament. But... Um, so the anointing, anointing upon, there's anointing upon that comes on, on folk and not just on ministers. The, now, now there are, there are anointings that there's an, there's an anointing that comes on an apostle and, and, and there's a, there's a, there's a prophet's anointing, evangelist, pastor, teacher, certainly, certainly. We'll talk about those perhaps as the Lord leads down the road, you know, and, but you don't have to be a, 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 what's known as a five fold minister, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Uh, to to have the anointing come on you, you know, and uh, are, are, you don't have to be a, a, a fivefold a minister, you know. When I say fivefold, there's five of them: apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You don't apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You don't have to be stand in a ministry office to have the anointing come on you, you know. But uh, but but there is a, a, an anointing that would rest upon and be within a, an apostle and certainly a, a prophet. There's, a, there's an anointing to flow in, in the prophet's ministry and uh, uh, evangelist. There's that evangelistic anointing that'll come on people and, and, and they'll preach that evangelist. Well, he preached. As I said a moment ago, take a text and preach and and then you'll see lots of uh, he, typically in an evangelist ministry, healings and miracles and then a pastoral anointing. That's a shepherd's anointing, the oversight of the, of the church, you know, the, 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 the local church and so forth and then the teacher the teaching anointing uh, and, and and that's one one of the the offices that I stand in is the teacher and and uh, that anointing I, I could I mean that anointing that one's on me and that abides on me that I mean I could you ask my wife I wake up in two o'clock in the morning I could start teaching <laughs> I mean that anointing's with me all the time teaching and uh, but but sometimes even that uh, gets heavier, and we'll see. Sometimes anointings are more, sometimes they're less, and, and I'll say more about that as we go. But uh, but there, and then that healing anointing. But the point I'm trying to say, get to you here, is is that that you may not be officially called to the ministry by God of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but that anointing could still come on you. And, and, and certainly, and, and to do whatever needs to be done, glory to God. And, and, and so I just wanted to make that clear. But in the Old Testament, so anyway, there's anointing comes on, and then there's an anointing within, and we'll get to talk, well, that, boy, that anointing within. I, I've got some rich things to share with you about that. So we'll get to that down the road, but that, much needs to be said about that. But like I said, I'm talking about the anointing upon. So Trying to get to the Old Testament here. Now, if you look at the Old Testament, you see the priests in the Old Testament. They were anointed, and they were anointed with oil. And I've got a good message. We're going to talk about the anointing oil in one of the future sessions. That's, that's a rich teaching. You'll want to get in on that. But, but the, the priests were anointed. And then let's look at Moses and Joshua in Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, the 9th verse. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. Now, something that, that you'll see in the Bible is that uh, 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 anointings can be transferred or deposited through the laying on of hands. Now, you have to be real careful with this because there's a lot of uh, what I call wannabe ministers or fly-by-night ministers or, you know, how do I want to say it? They're really not called of God or... You know, and they'll, they'll, they think they've got some sort of a laying on of hands ministry and they'll try to, uh, uh, you know, lay hands on people and, and give anointings to people. It doesn't work like that. I said it doesn't work like that. And listen, somebody lays hands on you, you better know something about those people and you better, better know something about their reputation. You don't want to let just any 
somebody lay hands on you. You can get yourself in a mess. Because just like, like good things of the Spirit can be transferred through the laying on of hands. I've, I've actually, I, I, I'm thinking of one right now where a lady that I know of let, let somebody who called herself a minister uh, <laughs> laid hands on her and, and, and an evil spirit uh, 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 that got off on her. And uh, this, this so-called lady minister laid hands on this other lady that I'm thinking about, used to uh, attend my church, and a, and a demonic power got off on her. And this lady that attended my church, she's contemplating suicide. And then we get traced it out. And it had, I'll tell you right now, with uh, very supernatural the way, the way the Holy Spirit revealed that. But she let uh, a minister lay hands on her and, she, and a de demonic power got off on her. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, well, we were able, praise God, to get her free of it and then go on down the road. But you, you need to be watchful about who lays hands on you. Just be very careful about who lays hands on you. You want to know something about who is laying hands on you. You know, if they're going to lay hands and pray for you, you want to be real careful about that. But as far, but, but actually, you look in the, into the New Testament, you see that the Apostle Paul, now he's, he's a good, he, I'd let him lay hands on me anytime. God used him to write over half the New Testament. Absolutely. He laid hands on that young man, Timothy, and imparted a spiritual gift to him. So there's a truth in it. Absolutely. A great truth in it. But, uh, but, but these ministries that you see, you know, advertise, we'll come, we'll, you know, come to our meeting, we'll lay hands on you and we'll impart some spiritual gift or we'll make you, you lay hands on you to be, a, you know, they'll say they're prophets and we'll lay hands on you and make you a prophet. That's a bunch of hooey, fooey hogwash. Don't go to that. It's not of God. Enough said. But here you got Moses I'd let him lay hands on me anytime. And you got Joshua, who was a faithful, longtime servant, see, servant of Moses. And, and, and if you really look at Paul and Timothy, Timothy was a spiritual son of Paul. So this, this, this thing, and if, if you haven't uh, been around charismatic Pentecostal circles, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, but around Pentecostal charismatic service, uh, circles, sometimes, and there's a lot of good stuff in those circles, lots of good stuff, but, but, but sometimes they just get out of whack and then you'll have, you know, ministers saying, well, you know, come to my meeting and we'll impart this or that to you. And, and, and people show up and that minister doesn't even know who they are and they're going to, you know, make them a prophet or it don't work. That's a bunch of hooey, fooey hogwash. Don't pay any attention to it. Stay away from that stuff. But here you got Moses Who's a, who's a bona fide man of God, <laughs> as you can see, uh, the leading prophet, actually, of the Old Testament. And then you got his longtime faithful servant, Joshua. And so now, when Moses lays hands on him at the direction of the Lord, I mean, that, that's powerful. And uh, like when Paul laid hands on Timothy, that's powerful, you understand. So there's great truth in the laying on of hands, imparting anointing or spiritual gift or, or whatnot. But, but requirements have to be met. You have to have a, first of all, you have to have a bona fide call of God minister. And then you have to have somebody that's, that's got a bona fide ministry who's been following that person, you see. And, and then now, now you got yourself something if the Lord's directing it as far as laying hands on and imparting some spiritual uh, blessing. But Joshua, this is Deuteronomy 34, 9. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid hands on him. Glory to God. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then, there had not arisen a, 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 in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and wonders, because you see, Joshua took over for Moses when Moses died. And, and now notice this. In all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before all his servants, and in all his land. See, signs and wonders. See, the anointing of God was mightily upon Moses. And you can see that through, through the miracles which took place and the signs and wonders in his ministry. And in verse 12, and by all that mighty power, that's Deuteronomy 34, 12, and by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel, I tell you what, Moses was heavily anointed 
by God, by the, by the Spirit of God. Absolutely. Praise God. So we see this anointing not only in, 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 in the life of Jesus and in his ministry. We, we see it in the ministry of Paul, as we noted last week. And then now back in the Old Testament. And I, there's many I could look at in the Old Testament. I'm just pulling out a few for you here. But, but uh, you see Moses had, uh, had, a, had a mighty, mighty ministry, as you know. And the, that was the anointing. It was the, what I'm trying to get across, it was the anointing that was flowing in Moses' life that did these mighty signs and wonders. Glory to God. And then Joshua picked up where Moses left off and, and mighty things and great conquests were done at the hand of Joshua. And we see the walls of Jericho falling. If you go on down in that story and much we could say, but how, I wonder how the, how them walls fell down, pastor. Well, the people of God were obedient to what God said to do and, and the power of God, the anointing, the power of God hit those walls and just, they dropped down flat. They fell there in Jericho. Can you say amen? So you have the anointing in, in the Old Testament, you know, but I, I don't know, I just feel, feel impressed to, to share with you about, yeah, the laying on of hands. I, I normally, I normally don't, what I'm about to say is first time I've shared this publicly, but, uh, uh, I, I, I do my best not to draw any attention to myself, but, but, uh, just been sharing some things over the last couple of weeks that I felt the Lord wanted me to, to share and for whatever it's, whatever it is or isn't worth to you. But, but, uh, uh, um, uh, but I remember like the laying on of hands and the anointing. I remember there was a, uh, uh, a real prophet of God in this area here in the, the Fenton area. His name was David Crank. I seldom, uh, senior, David Crank, senior. I seldom ever call names, but I just feel impressed. He was a prophet of God, really a New Testament prophet. And uh, I remember as we started Summit Church and many years had come and gone and I felt impressed of the Lord to, uh, we're talking about the anointing now. I know I'm in the Old Testament, but I want to share this. <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about the Old Testament, but I want to share this because it talked about Moses laying hands on Joshua. And uh, uh, in a previous session, I'd shared with you how, how, how uh, Brother Crank had, had ministered to me supernaturally when I was... Uh, uh, when I was about 20, I guess, in my early 20s. Well, 63, I was 19. I was born in 63 and it was 82. I guess I was 19. And, uh, and I followed his ministry very closely uh, for many, many years. I did not attend his, his, uh, his, his church or training center. I didn't attend it. I just visited from time to time. But uh, went to another church. But, uh, but he is a man of God. He really was. And... Uh, um, um, but, but as time went on, I felt led to go to one of his, uh, I mean, we'd started some at church had gone many years, but I, and I, and I didn't visit around to churches cause as a pastor, you go visit. Now, I'd, if somebody's having a special meeting where, you know, like brother Hagen would come in and minister, you know, for a couple of, a uh, few days or a week or whatever, I'd go to those, but I wouldn't go visit somebody else's church. Cause as a pastor, you don't want to, you know, you look like you're going there trying to get to get his members to come to mine to my ch church you know so I didn't visit around just didn't do that but I felt imp so strongly impressed of the Lord to go to uh to his uh to, to what to, I I need to, I just needed to go and to to one of his services and I believe it was on Sunday night I went and uh uh, and, and, I, and I knew in my heart I was supposed to thank him for, for, for helping me over the years and ministering to me. And, uh, and he was not an easy man to get through to. He was very difficult. You couldn't just really walk up to him and start talking or call him on the phone. He, you know, uh, uh, he, he's very, very uh, uh, eccentric in that way. You couldn't, I'm not saying nothing bad about him. It just, you couldn't get through to him. It's very hard to get through to. As far as, you know, he, he'd always keep his distance from people. And, uh, but I felt I needed to go tell him, uh, thank him. I, so anyway, so, so I went to this Sunday night service and I didn't know how I was going to do it because you can't, he'd come in and leave. You could never get through to him. But I'm standing there, back row, drawing no attention to myself. And his assistant, the service had started. There are many, many people there, you know, a couple hundred people. And, and his assistant came over to me and said, uh, "He, Brother Crank wants you to come up on the, 
on the stage and, and share, share, share whatever you want, whatever you want to say. He, and he didn't know me. I mean, he didn't know who I was. <laughs> Talk about being led to the spirit and the Holy Ghost in, in something. And I went up there. Next thing you know, I had the microphone in my hand and I was able to stand there for a few minutes and thank him. It's unheard of to thank him for the, the blessing that he he had been to me, and then I always wanted to minister with him in the healing line. I just wanted to walk behind him as he ministered because I'd ministered myself in so many healing lines. I just always, from the time I was a, a, a teenager, wanted to minister with him. He didn't know that. I never even told anybody that. <laughs> and, and so after I thanked him so, so, so much for helping me, <laughs> he didn't really even know who I am other than I don't, it was God that put this together. And then, uh, and then he went down and Many people came up and he told me, he said, you go that way. I'll go this way, laying hands on the people. I didn't want to do that. I, I asked him if I could just walk with him. And so I did. And, uh, and, and he ministered to the people and I, and I stood behind him as he ministered. And, and, uh, what an honor to be able to do that. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then he, he, then he started to preach. He had, he let me sit up on the platform. That was pretty cool. And, but I said all that to say this, uh, he got about halfway through his message and uh, and he just he, he just stopped dead still and looked right at me. And then he bound. I mean, he, he was down on the floor. He bound. That platform was real high. He bound like he bounded up onto that platform and just like bounded over me and laid his hands on me and slapped me side to upside the head. And I mean, the power of God came on me. Talk about. I mean, it was powerful. You could just feel that power. And and uh, I saw the first time I've ever shared this all these decades. And, uh, but you know, God had begun to use me uh, along in a prophetic flow. And, uh, and after he laid hands on me, I mean, I began to flow in that, in that prophetic more so. It got deeper, we'll put it that way. And uh, prophetically, you could just see things so much more clearly. And, and God allowed me to share several prophecies as time went on. Uh, very just cold-blooded accuracy and not drawing attention to myself, but but these things are real. These things are real. These things are real. My 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 my. Just 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 go back now. Go back uh, in our archives. About oh, a month, month and a half, two months ago, I taught a message on uh, the, the sore loser. You ought to listen to the very end of that message. Right, right at the end. Uh, where, where I gave something out as it pertains to Donald Trump and uh, how they were all going to, they'd gone after him, they're going after him, they're going to keep going after him. Uh, but none of them were going to get him. Best they do is a glancing blow. Think about that. And then, and then look at what happened with this assassination attempt and glancing blow. I mean, just you ought to go back and listen to that. Not to draw attention to myself, but just to share these things with you. To let you know these things are real. There, there's a lot of fake stuff out there, but there's some, there's some real stuff too. And I'm not boasting myself, but the proof of the pudding's in the eating. So you ought to go listen to that. Sore loser right at the end. And uh, interesting, interesting. And uh, it was also interesting is, is, I don't know, about a year later, then Brother, Brother Crank went to heaven. He, he went on to heaven. But I was able to get that in before he went. Interesting. You know, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. I think about another minister who, who I who I studied under and learned under, and for years and years and years I attended his church for years and years, and then he eventually uh, uh, more or less retired and moved out of the area. And I hadn't talked with him in about ten years. And uh, one day I just felt so impressed. I needed to call him up, call him up, call him up, call him up. Just on the inside, didn't hear an audible voice, just leading of the Spirit of God and called him up and again to thank him just to thank him for uh for what he'd done for me you know um uh, as you know there were some negative things that i dealt with with him but there was lots of positives and uh call him up and thank him and i did called him up and thanked him and a week and a half later my wife told me that she had found out that he went to heaven oh we need to we need to stay sensitive to the holy ghost Glory to God. Stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Stay sensitive. We'll talk about that anointing within in the future sessions, as I've said. And let's stay sensitive. 
These things are real. 1 Kings 18, 46, Old Testament, talking about the anointing upon. Notice here, that was Moses and Joshua, but Elijah and Elisha. 1 Kings 18, 46, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was the senior minister. Elisha was his servant. And notice the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He girded up his loins and ran, ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He, that Ahab was the king and his chariots and, and the, the, the Bible says the hand of the Lord. Remember, we told you in a previous session when the, hand, when the Bible says the hand of the Lord came on somebody, that was the anoint. That's another way for saying the anointing came on. The anointing came on Elijah and that power came on him. I no doubt hit him in his feet and he took off and he outran the king's chariot. You think about fast. You talk, you ought to go back and look up the $6 million man from the 70s. Glory to God, that bionic man, you know, he could run 60 miles an hour. Well, Elijah didn't need the bionic, the bionic legs. He had the anointing of God, praise God, and he outran the king's chariot. The anointing of God would come on, would come on people, the hand of God. The Spirit of God came on him and he outran. Now that anointing was on him, but it wasn't on him all the time. How do I know that? Because he couldn't always run that fast. Just when the anointing was on him, and we only have instance that I see one time that that, came, that kind of anointing came on him. Now, I remember in my life, the first time I was uh, given the opportunity to preach. Actually, it was that guy's church that, uh, that I told you about. Uh, his last name was Willigy. Willigy. And uh, Larry Willigy, that was his name. He's in heaven now, but I learned under him. And he gave me, uh, seldom do I call names, but I don't know why I'm, Lord's having me call names here. But, but, but anyway, uh, I learned under him. And uh, I remember the first I learned, you know, I, I guess you'd say I, I apprenticed for the ministry, if you want to call it that, under him. And uh, I was his assistant for many years. And uh, uh, he... Uh, he let me preach my first message in his church one time years ago. It was on a Sunday night. I'll never forget it. First time I got in the pulpit. I was teaching. I titled it, Who is this Jesus? And I was teaching on who Jesus, talking about Jesus. And uh, I got to one point in that message and something happened to me that had never happened before. And it's only happened a couple of times since. But the power of God hit my feet. Now here, I was raised in the Baptist church. You're not, you're not going to see this in the Baptist church <laughs> that I'm aware of. But the power of God hit my feet. Now, that's the anointing of God. Now, you don't ever have to yield to the anointing. You should, but you don't have to. So the Holy Ghost didn't make me do this. But I just, there was something got in my feet. What was it? It was the anointing of God. And I began to dance. And I, da and my, I danced and my feet went so fast. I still to this day... I don't know how they got to going that fast. And I'm not a dancer anyway, but I mean, it wasn't a dancing in the flesh. It was a dance in the spirit. And I tell you what, uh, people ask me afterward, how did you get your feet going so fast? First of all, they said, oh, we didn't know you had that in you. And I didn't either. <laughs> it was the anointing of God hit me. And uh, how did you get your feet going that fast? I don't know. But, uh, uh, but, but I yielded to the Holy Ghost. And when I did, a blessing went out over the congregation. A blessing, not trying to draw attention to myself, but a blessing. Interesting thing is, uh, some time went on, and I had my another opportunity. Now I'm a younger minister at the time, but I had, was learning. And so uh, there's a difference between being excited and being anointed. And, and I, <laughs> second time I got an opportunity to preach, that was so cool the first time when, when the anointing got in my feet. I got excited in the middle of my message and there's nothing wrong with that. And so I thought, well, that was so good last time. Let's just dance again. But it wasn't in the spirit this time. It, the anointing wasn't there. And, and I learned you don't want to you don't want to do that when the anointing's not there because on, uh, the first time a great blessing went out. It's like somebody took a bucket and threw a blessing out on the congregation. Well, when I tried to dance and the anointing wasn't in my feet, it's like somebody took a bucket of cold water and flipped through it on the congregation. It, the whole service just teaching just died right there and that was the end of it. I should have just closed up my Bible and, 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 and stopped. But uh, you, what am I trying to say? You want to do things, you know, like that. You want to be sure the anointing's there before you, you know, because if you, it's like that one lady said, I've heard you sing under the anointing and, and I've heard you sing when you're not under the anointing. She said, it's hard enough to take when you're under the anointing. She said, just don't sing when you're not under the anointing because it's, it's, it's terrible. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer, but thank God for the anointing. Anyway, 
These things are real. Uh, and the hand of the Lord came on Elijah. The power of God got in his feet and he ran. Look at 1 Kings 19. It says, uh, so he departed from there, Elijah. He found Elisha. Now this is going to be his young servant, but he found him uh, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. On him, see. Now this mantle was a robe. It was a robe uh, like a like a like a robe, a, a garment, a robe, and he threw it on him, which indicated that this young man was 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 being anointed as actually a prophet, and he was going to then eventually uh, take over for Elijah. Interesting thing. It was some I don't know. I think if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't know. I can't remember now. 10, 15, 20 years before he actually. If I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't just like two years or three years. It was many years that he served Elijah before he actually stepped into that role of, of, of the prophet. In the meantime, do you know what Elisha did? He, he served. He said he became his. Well, let's read here. He left the yoke of oxen, verse 20, ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother. Then I'll follow you. He said, go back again. What have I done to you? I preach hours on that. You have to, if you're going to be used of God, you're going to, you're going to have to be able to, to leave, to leave all like the, like Peter, James and John. So we've left all and followed you, Jesus. You're going to have to leave all. You're going to have to leave some things. You're going to have to leave some things, some things that are dear to you very oft times, most all the time. If you're going to serve God, I had to leave some things that are near and dear to me. I had, I had, I had to leave some things. I've had to leave jobs, good jobs. To serve God. Oh, it's worth it. Oh, it was worth it. Oh, it was worth it. Oh, it was worth it. And, and he had to leave some things to, to, to do what God wanted him to do. And he turned back. He took the yoke of oxen. He slaughtered them. You had to burn some bridges too. Absolutely. <laughs> I could teach for hours on it. And he rose and followed Elijah and became his servant. You see, before, before Elijah, uh, before Elisha, the servant stepped in and took over for Elijah as, as a prophet. There's a leading prophet. He served him for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. If I'm not mistaken, it was many, many years. Servant like, like Joshua served Moses, you see, for many, many years. And Elisha was known as the man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Yeah, yeah. you got to, I tell you what, something else that the, that the, uh, that the anointing will, will conduct, will f something else that will conduct the anointing and the anointing will flow through his servanthood, being a humble servant, humility, humility, Servant, being a servant, humility and being a servant, humility and being a servant. Absolutely. And uh, and then notice in Second Kings 2 verse 9. So it was when they crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I may do for you. So Elijah says to his young servant. Now, this is right before Eli Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. And he was going to be taken off the earth by, by, the, by God. And Elisha was going to take over for him. And he says, uh, he said, what may I do for you when I'm taken up? He said, let a double portion of your spirit, or we could say, let a double portion of your anointing be on me. Double portion. There's a double portion. Absolutely. What am I trying to say here? The anointings can be greater, can be less. Absolutely. You can see it right there. Double, double, double. Double. Anointings can be increased. Absolutely. Anointings can be in greater manifestation and in lesser manifestation. Sometimes there's no anointing at all. Sometimes anointings in great manifestation. Boy, I like that. I like that. Uh, but let a double portion of your spirit or your, your, your anointing be on me, be on me, upon me, upon me. Talking about the anointing upon today. And then he says, you've asked a hard thing. And then he goes on and he says, you know, if you see me when I'm taken up, it'll be so and so forth. You can read all that for the sake of time. And he saw him when he was taken up in that whirlwind, when Elijah was caught up. You can read all that. And then he took up the mantle of Elijah and he smote those waters and those waters, you know, they, they parted and so on and so forth. And then he began to walk as a leading prophet, you see. But he was a servant for many, many, many years. Glory to God. But that anointing that was on Elijah, it came on Elisha in a double portion, you see. Glory to God. And then it's interesting, if you go to 2 Kings 3, verse 15, uh, this was a time when, when Elisha, then later on down the road, he says, bring me a musician. We talked about this earlier in an earlier session, but the anointing, will, the anointing can be stirred up through music. 
absolutely could be stirred that's a good way to say it could be stirred through music and good good worship music unto the lord and and <laughs> I tell you what, and, uh, and and now bring me a musician, Elisha said. And it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came on him. And he said, thus saith the Lord. He began to prophesy. The hand of God came on him. And then look, if you would, at, um, at you, if you would, 2 Kings 13, uh, 2 Kings 13, verse 14. Elisha had become sick with an illness with which he would die. Now, this is near the end of his life, Elisha. Elijah had been caught up, you know. And then Elisha took over and actually he had the double portion. If you study it out, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Very interesting. But nonetheless, but he'd become sick with an illness of which he would die. And uh, then verse 20, watch this. Eli then Elisha died. They buried him. And then raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man. Notice this, suddenly they spied a band of raiders. They put the man, the dead man, in, tomb, in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. There was enough anointing in that prophet's dead bones. Glory to God. Enough residue anointing to raise the dead. Glory to God. See, the anointing can be stored in the human body. It can flow through the human body, flow through cloth, flow through these other things, through faith and, and servanthood and humility. Glory to God. Agreement. Praise God. But there was enough anointing, residue anointing left over in that prophet's dead bones to raise a man from the dead. Now, somebody says, if there was so much anointing in that uh, man of God, Elijah, why did he get, why couldn't he be healed from that illness from which he would die? Now, I could talk for hours on it, but for the sake of time, let me just tell you this, that I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the, the answer to that. I don't know. I don't know what you see, you know, people over the years who had miracle ministries and, and the power of God would flow through them mightily to heal others. Yet you see them, you know, uh, now, now Elijah, in fairness to him, he was like 90 years old when he when he when he died, he lived out his life. But you still say, well, why did he die of sickness if he had such power flowing through him? And, 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 and why do others? We've seen over the, over the many uh, centuries, you know, great healing power in their ministry. The multitudes healed under their ministry, yet they get sick and they even in midlife and die. Why is that, Pastor Terry? Why is that? Why is that? I could preach for hours on it. But at the end of the day, at the end of those hours, I would still say I really don't, I can't fully answer the question. The Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord. Now, Elijah had lived out his life. Why did he die of an illness? I mean, why, why didn't he get healed of that? I, I, you know, Paul left, I think, tr uh, Trophimus at Miletus sick. Why with Paul having that healing power flowing out of him? Why would one of his servants, helpers be left sick? I can only speculate at best. And, and the secret things belong to the Lord. So I, I can't answer those questions. And if you're a young minister out there, I can save you about, about 45 years of uh, meditation. I wouldn't spend much time on that. Secret things belong to the Lord. Sometimes there's things that are, that are in people's lives that you don't even know about. And it's between them and the Lord. So you just followed Jesus said, follow me. So you follow Jesus and keep your eyes on him. And uh, something, you know, somebody else's life you don't understand. You know, why did the power of God flow through them? But they couldn't get healed themselves. That's between them and the Lord. You follow Jesus. Now look at 2 Chronicles 20. A massive army was coming against Jehoshaphat and the people of God. They set themselves to seek the Lord. And notice in 2 Chronicles 20 verse, 20, verse 14, says the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. This was a man there in the congregation. And, uh, and, and then he began to prophesy and he prophesy. He began to prophesy. And he said in verse 15, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude that's coming against you for the battle is not yours, but God's and so forth and so on. And he began to prophesy, but you see the spirit of the Lord. One of the things that happens when the spirit of God comes on a minister and you don't have to be a minister, you know, to, to prophesy, but the spirit of the Lord came on him and he prophesied glory to God. And so just another example. And then if you look into, uh, into the book of judges, Look into the book of Judges, the judges of Israel. You see the spirit of the Lord came upon Othanel, Othanel. And the Bible said, and he judged Israel and went out to war, to war, and the Lord delivered. See, so, so when the spirit of the Lord comes on, the anointing comes on, it doesn't always come on somebody to perform a, you know, a miracle or a healing or something like that. 
It, it, the Spirit of the Lord can come on you to, to, to fulfill the task. He was a judge of Israel, not judgmental, but he stood in a, as a judge, as a, a holy judge of Israel. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and he judged. So God anointed him to do, to do, his, to do what he'd called him to do. And, and then to, to lead Israel in, in war and so forth and bring deliverance to God's people. Then there's Jephthah. Jephthah, the Spirit of the Lord came on him. You can look this up in, in the book of Judges. And the Bible said he passed through. Glory to God and deliverance came. The anointing can come on you. Well, but I'm not a minister, Pastor Terry. Doesn't matter. The anointing of God, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing of God can come on you. Maybe there's something in your life you need to pass through. Well, let that anointing come on you and glory to God, pass through it. Praise God. Well, I'm facing the valley of the shadow of death. Well, you don't have to fear for the Lord's with you and just, yea, though I walk through, just pass through it. Uh, let the anointing of God come on you and pass through that valley. Glory to God. You don't have to die young. Pass through that valley of the shadow of death. Glory to God. Don't stop and die. Just keep right on going. Let the anointing hit your feet and just get on through there. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. The Spirit of God came on Gideon and he blew a trumpet. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to always see it like a, a healing miracle. There can be other things the anointing of God comes on you to do, like blowing a trumpet. Praise God. <laughs> He blew the trumpet. You, you, great things happen. You can, you can read it in the book of Judges. I tell you what, there's nothing like when, when somebody anointed to the Spirit of God blows that trumpet, uh, the tr something about that trumpet. And because I've been, been around worship services and there's something about that. There's something about the piano, praise God, but there's something about that trumpet. My goodness, I, people start playing that piano and I start crying. But I tell you, People start playing that trumpet and I get bold. I have something about that trumpet blast under the anointing of God and just boldness comes on me. Praise God forevermore. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Boy, I tell you what, <laughs> whew, I mean... When, when God, the trumpet of God, when he blows that trumpet, his trumpet is going to raise the dead at the rapture. Can you say amen? Boy, I can feel that anointing right now. Praise God. And then the spirit of, so the spirit of God came on Gideon. Spirit of the Lord came on Samson. We're going to, I'm going to do a whole message on him and the anointing and how one can lose the anointing and get it back. We'll talk about that later on, on down the road. And I'm going to do a whole session on him, on Samson and the anointing. But the spirit of the Lord came on Samson and in great superhuman strength came on him. Praise God forevermore. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, 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 whew, praise God. Hey, let me, let, me, let me go on just a little while longer. I know I'm just about out of time, but I don't want to unhook right here. I'm going to finish this up. Now we see that power in the Old Testament, but then of course we see it in the, we see it in the ministry of Jesus. We talked about that last week, but now you see it in the church. Absolutely. Look at Acts 1.8. Jesus said, but you shall receive power. That's that dynamite power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, see, the Spirit of God will come on us in the New Testament, just like he did in the Old. And you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And then in Mark 16, Jesus said these, verse 17, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. And he goes on to say they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Praise God. So the spirit of God can come on us as believers. Not, thank God. Yeah, the apostles, Peter, James, John, and Paul, and so forth. They had the power of God on them. Absolutely. But, but the power of God will come on. These signs will follow those who believe. If you believe, the Spirit of God can come on you. And then, of course, we often put time, uh, emph emphasis on, the, on, the, uh, on, on the, the, the healing or even the casting out of devils. But, but actually, to be witnesses. To, to tell people, to preach the gospel and tell people about Jesus. Let's don't forget that one. Let, let's, we ought to keep that one first because that's the most important thing anyway, telling people about Jesus, getting them born again so they miss hell and make heaven. But also to cast out demons and lay hands on the sick. The Spirit of God, the anointing will come on us to do that. And of course, we saw that the Apostle Paul, last week we saw that God wrought or, or, or performed unusual miracles through his hands. But it wasn't just his hands. It was that the anointing of God 
was in Paul's hands that they'd even take and on his body and in his body that they take handkerchiefs from his body or aprons and take them to sick and demon possessed people and those people would be set free. Glory to God. And look at Romans the 15th chapter about, about Paul. He wrote this. He said, Romans 15, 18, for I'll not dare speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about Curlium and so forth, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So see, he went out and he preached. That was Romans 15, 18 and 19. He preached the gospel. He was anointed to preach the gospel. And then you saw the power of the Spirit of God in Paul's life and signs and wonders were done. But even more importantly than that, he won so many people to Christ. He won people to Christ. Paul before he was an apostle, he was a soul winner. And let the Holy Ghost anoint you and come on you to win people to Christ. And then, of course, in Acts, the fifth chapter, let's look at, uh, at uh, uh, Peter. And through the hands, look at Acts 5, 12, through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And uh, they were with one accord in Solomon's porch. That one accord, that agreement, will conduct the anointing. Yet none of, none of the rest d uh, dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And so if you're anointed to the Spirit of God, flowing with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> it'll cause people to respect you. And people... <laughs> If you're really flowing in the power of God and the believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of, of them, both men and women, so that they watch as they brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by uh, might fall on some of them. And of course, they were healed. Also, a multitude gathered from surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick, sick, pe sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. And they were trying to just get close enough to Peter that his shadow would fall on him, on him, on the sick people. But there was no healing virtue in Peter's shadow. If, just think about it. If you're within shadows. Uh, length of somebody, you're pretty close to them, aren't you? And that anointing, I, I, I've learned that about the anointing. It, it'll go out from somebody. It'll go out from somebody's, ab absolutely from somebody's person. I, I've been around some people that were heavily anointed to the Spirit of God. And I tell you what, you get within a certain certain distance of them, you can sense that. You can sense that anointing. I, I know what I'm talking about. You can sense that anointing. And people wanted, I mean, Peter had that, that healing power in his body that people wanted to get just within a shadow shadows cast of him and they just get close enough when that anointing was on him glory to God to drive out sickness and disease and demon power can you say amen and then in Acts the third chapter and we'll close right here in verse 1 now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour now hang on every word here and a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried who they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple ask alms then Peter fasting his eyes on him with John said look on us look on us underline that in your Bible look on us King James says look on us most all the other translations say look at us I like look on us not look at us you look at a minister you're going to get nothing you just look at him you're going to get nothing but he was saying, look on us. Why did he say, look on us? Because the anointing of the Holy Ghost was on them. The power of God was on them. See, too many people looking at a minister. Too many people, uh, you know, uh, look looking at. And what I mean by that, oh, if I could just get to so-and-so and, and, and shake their hand or whatever. Just No, I tell you what, you look at a minister, you're going to get nothing. You'll get nothing. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You, you, you look at them. You know, there's a difference between looking at and looking on. You just look at a minister, you get, you, you, you really, you get nothing. But oh, don't look at a minister, look on a minister. Look on, see what's on that man, see what's on that woman. He said, look on us, not at us, look on us. Why? Because the anointing of the Spirit of God was upon them, and he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Peter said, silver and gold, I have, I have none. That didn't mean he was broke, he had 
had money down at the down where they were staying. He just didn't have any money on him at the time. And he said, silver and gold have I none. But and even if he had a bunch of money, that couldn't heal that man. But he said, such as I have, give I thee. What did he have? He had the anointing of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Can you say amen? Glory to God. It was the anointing of God and, and the name of Jesus that, that, that went into operation. And when Peter said in the name of Jesus, see that, he said, look on us. And that, that guy looked, looked on him. What did he see? He saw the anointing of God on him. Praise God. Even though he might have still been looking for money. But what was on? He, see, Peter was trying to get that guy's eyes off of money and get over on the anointing. Look on us. Not at us, but on us. And on him was the anointing. And then he said the, the name that activates the anointing. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And that name activated that anointing and that power went into operation and healed that lame man. Can you say amen? Glory be to God forevermore. Verse 11, and as the lame man, which was healed, which Peter, uh, which held Peter and John, because praising God in verse 11, the lame man, which was healed, which I get so excited. I have to forgive. No, don't. For, I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm just excited. I almost said, forgive me. No, I'm not going to ask for your forgiveness. I'm excited. Praise God. Glory to God. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch. That's called Solomon, greatly wondering. See that power of God will make people wonder. And, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why do mar you marvel at this? Or why look so earnestly on us? As though by our, now watch this, as though by our own power or holiness, we'd made this man to walk. See, it wasn't Peter's power. It wasn't John's power. It wasn't their power through their own, it wasn't their own power or their own holiness. No, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. And Peter said it right there. He said, it's not my power. It's not my holiness that healed this guy. But what was it? It was the power of the Holy Spirit of God made this man to walk in verse 16. And he said, and his name, Jesus name through faith in his name has made this man strong. Glory to God forevermore. Now I want to talk to you right now. If you're out there and you have sickness and disease in your body and, and the doctor has given you a terminal diagnosis and you've been given up to die sickness and disease. And even if it's not terminal, but it's just something that's making your life miserable, any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, whatever it may be, I'm telling you right now, don't look at me, look on me. God has given me a special anointing to heal the sick. It's not my power. It's not my holiness. No, but God gave that to me, that healing anointing, special anointing to heal the sick. Now look on me and I'm going to make a faith declaration to you. And when I do receive the power of God, let it hit your body and let it work in your body and let it heal you. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the head of the church, I release the anointing of God to you right now. Be healed in that precious name of Jesus. Now the healing power of God went out. Now you receive it, let it hit your body, let it heal your body, let it affect a healing and a cure and be healed instantly or let that power of God work in you and recover over time in Jesus name. Now if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior, you need to repent of your sins and call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive him as your Lord and savior. If you call on his name, accept him into your life, you'll be saved. You'll miss hell. One day when you die, you'll make heaven and he'll make your life worth living in the meantime. Went a little bit long, but it was worth it. Glory to God. And I I will see you next week and we'll pick up with more on the anointing. Praise God. See you then. Bye-bye.